For our scripture reading this morning, we are reading from towards the end of Paul's letter to the Roman Christians, chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Well, can you believe that it has been 30 weeks since we had our last normal church service? It was, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? It was March 15th, and we had our St. Patrick's lunch afterwards. Wasn't that a wonderful time together? But I remember thinking, even then, because we'd already decided to close for a while, that if we had to shut, that this was a really good way to say goodbye to each other, at least for a while, to have a wonderful meal and a party together. Of course, none of us thought it would be September before we met in person once more. And here we are nearly seven months later, and the news is nearly as bad now as it was last spring. Only this time we have firsthand experience of just how difficult life can be with a pandemic in full swing. Now, I'm not sure if I find it unbelievable because it's only been 30 weeks, because it feels much longer, or if it because it has been a whole long 30 weeks and it feels like just yesterday when life was normal and we didn't have to wear masks and worry so much. I find that time has passed very strangely during the pandemic. Days feel like weeks, and yet weeks can go by in a flash. Some of the world ground to a halt for a while, and yet some people had to work much harder and in much more challenging and dangerous conditions than ever before. I know sometimes I've had to overcome my own inertia just to get anything done, and yet other times I've had to remind myself and even stop myself from doing something because it wasn't safe or possible to do right then. So I was thinking about time and life in a pandemic and how worrying it is to imagine that we might be headed into a, a long winter of restrictions and rising COVID numbers. And Paul's words in verse 11 really caught my attention. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. Now, as we head into what looks like round two of our experience with this crisis, as we peer through the weirdness of pandemic time, and struggle against the apathy and the inactivity, the anxiety and the isolation, is now really the moment? Is now the moment for us to be doing anything other than waiting this thing out, hibernating until it's all over and we can get back to normal? Is now still the time, still the moment for God's people, for Christ's followers to be sharing the good news and standing witness to who God is? Now, this morning's scripture reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, and it was his last letter and also his longest letter. We know that although Paul didn't establish a church in Rome, he knew a little bit about them. And in this letter, he was responding to reports of conflict and division between Jewish Christians and Gentile Roman Christians, two very different groups of people who were together following this new faith and who were struggling together, but also with their surrounding culture and what was happening around them. Now, Paul started by talking about love, referencing Jesus' very familiar words when he talks about the greatest commandment. 
In the gospel, when Jesus was asked, out of all the commandments, which one is the greatest, the most important? He responded by saying we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, our mind, our soul, and we should love our neighbors as ourselves. In other words, love God and love people. And Paul re-delivers Jesus' message. He brings up the Ten Commandments, familiar to his Jewish Christian readers, and perhaps reminding the Roman Christian members of the church that there are rules that they need to live by, but that all God's laws and rules can be summed up in love, that love is the fulfillment of all the laws. Now they knew, and we know of course, that this is not romantic love or family love or even sort of a warm, loving feeling. It's an active love that decides and thinks and does for the good of others. It's called agape love. So love God and love others. But then Paul cranks up the urgency a bit. Now is the moment to love God and love others because salvation is closer than when we first believed. Like so many of the early Christian churches, it seems that the church in Rome was struggling with Jesus being a no-show, or at least taking way too long to come back. Many of Jesus' first generation of followers expected him to come back during their lifetimes, and as the second coming failed to happen, uncertainty about what that meant and about what they should be doing arose. Now here in Rome, it seems that a kind of spiritual indifference had taken root. God's laws, his rules for good living, explained and elaborated upon by Jesus and the apostles, those laws were being ignored. And all the things that Paul lists, carousing and drunkenness, sexual immorality and debauchery, dissension and fighting and jealousy, well, the Roman elite, most likely under the Emperor Nero at this point, were voracious and hungry consumers of all of those things. The powerful and wealthy people of Rome were famous, or or maybe infamous, for their excess. So Paul urgently reminds these Christians to rebel against conforming to the world around them, to wake up, to shake off the apathy and the arguing and the doubts, and live for Jesus and like Jesus now, because every moment counted. Now, of course, Paul was not actually talking about how to live through a pandemic. He was talking about societal problems, including promiscuity and alcohol use, conflict and jealousy, which are not at all the same things that we're going through right now. And yet there is a parallel to our situation. Paul is saying that we should live for Christ now, rebelling against conformity with the attitudes and habits of the world around us, resisting the traps that we cannot quite help but fall into, pushing all of that aside so that we can live and love for Christ. Now, conforming to the world these days probably looks a little bit more like arguing and picking sides, using a health crisis for personal or political leverage, spreading fear, blaming others, acting selfishly. The traps of anxiety and isolation, fear and anger loom large all around us. So is now still the time, still the moment, for God's people, is now the moment to love God and to love others. I believe it is. Now is the moment for us as Christ followers to keep proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of God. And now is the moment for us to care for one another and for our communities and to think creatively about how we can do that. Now is the moment for all of us to believe in the promises of our faith, to believe that God is good and to believe that we can overcome this crisis that we are still facing together. The world does still need to be reminded that in the face of every divisive issue, every scary circumstance, and every impossible scenario, there are people who can and will love God and love one another, no matter what. But here is a question I think we do need to ask ourselves. When we come out on the other side of this, whenever that is and whatever it looks like, what do we want people to remember about how we responded? What do we want our witness as Christians together to be? Do we want people to remember that we fell into the traps of our own humanness 
and let anger and blame or fear dictate the shape of our faith and how we shared that faith with others? Or do we want people to remember that we responded with love? Paul tells us to put on the armor of light, and that's some personal protective equipment I think we'd all quite happily wear. We put on the armor of light and clothe ourselves with Jesus and everything he taught us to be and to do. And then we keep sharing the hope we have for God's coming kingdom, and we keep helping others to know God, too. We respond to the trials and challenges that life keeps throwing at us, and we dig deep into our faith instead of turning away from it. And we understand and we remind others that we are journeying through this global pandemic and that it will end. Now, one of the many things that I have come to love about St. Andrews is that we are a church of deep history and many, many stories. And I've been wondering, when we tell the story of the COVID-19 pandemic some years from now, or when today's children tell their children about it even later, when that story gets told, what will be said? Will we talk about the people who died, the economies that crashed, the hardships that people endured, the selfishness and the hoarding and the greed, the way that lives became counters in a game of politics, the complaining and quarreling that surfaced? Or will we share stories of God's presence among us during this time? Will we tell the coming generation about how we stayed together and took care of each other, even when we were stuck in our homes? Stories of how we looked out for each other's needs, of the ways we complied with recommendations to keep each other safe, even when we didn't want to. Stories of how we gave as generously as we were able to help those in greater need even than ourselves, to continue the ministry and the mission of Jesus' church. Will we tell how we remembered and clung to the promises of Scripture, to the certainty that God is love and is still in charge in this world, even in the midst of a pandemic, and how God helped us to do that? Those would be good stories to tell and a better history to remember. And I can't think of a better message for us to hear this morning as we transition into yet another season of the pandemic. It is now the moment. It is now the moment to show the community who we are as a church and as followers of Jesus. It is now the moment to embrace the hope that God has always promised us. It is now the moment to love God and love others and to let that love continue to shape our lives, even now and maybe especially now. And one day, may we look back at this time at our church, at our St. Andrew's family, and at our community, and even at our country, and see that our COVID-19 response was to do what we have always been called to do, what we have always faithfully tried to do. We loved God, and we loved others. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>